Hello. In this video, we are going to discuss the free particle in quantum mechanics. Recall that for any system, we can describe it using the Schrodinger equation, which in one dimension is going to be minus h bar squared over 2m times the second derivative with respect to x of the wave function plus some potential. And this is going to be equal to the energy of the system times the wave function. Recall that we can write this in operator notation more simply, simply as the Hamiltonian acting on the wave function is equal to the energy of the system times the wave function. In the case of the free particle, we have no potential. So since there's no potential energy acting on the particle, it's completely free to roam wherever it likes. And in that case, we can rewrite the Schrodinger equation more succinctly. In this case, as minus h bar squared over 2m times the second derivative with respect to x of psi is equal to e times psi. You see here we have just the kinetic energy term. So now we'd like to try out potential wave function solutions of this equation. And one version we can use is the following. Psi is simply going to be some constant a times e to the i k x. And we want to see if this actually is a true solution of the Schrodinger equation. So to test, we're going to substitute it into the equation and solve. So that gives us minus h bar squared over 2m times the second derivative with respect to x of our wave function, which is a times e to the i k x. equal to e times psi. Let's leave it as psi over here. So what we need to do is take the second derivative, which we recall is simply the first derivative of the first derivative. So remind ourselves that the first derivative of a times e to the i k x is going to be a, we bring down the i k, the coefficients of x, and then times e to the i k x. So this gives us the first derivative of psi. So now for the second derivative, again, we take the derivative again of a times i k e to the i k x. And again, the coefficient stays the same and we bring down the coefficient of x in the exponential and put that in front. So that gives us a i times i gives us i squared. k times k is k squared. And then we continue with the e to the i k x. Summarizing the second derivative of our wave function with respect to x is equal to a times i squared times k squared times e to the i k x. A couple things. So in our equation, we need to multiply it to get the true Hamiltonian by minus e h bar squared over 2m times this second derivative, which we'll write in orange here to remind ourselves of what that is, times a i squared k squared times e to the i k x. And we can do some simplification here since 
i squared is simply minus 1. Minus 1 times the minus 1 in front makes a positive. So that gives us h bar squared times k squared over 2m times e to the i k x. But we recognize that, and our a, our a in there. So we recognize the a e to the i k x as simply psi. So what does this mean? What well, gives us h bar squared times k squared over 2m times the wave function back times our a e to the i k x. So what this tells us is that the energy of the system is equal to this expression in front here. This is our e so it tells us that the energy of the system is going to be equal to h bar squared times k squared divided by 2m in the case of the free particle. But now let's suppose that instead of beginning with a wave function where we have e to the i k x, let's try instead now b times e to the minus i k x and see what we get. Well again we're going to take the sec need to take the second derivative. So the first derivative with respect to x of psi is going to be minus i k b e to the minus i k x. So that's the first derivative. Now if we take the second derivative with respect to x that's the first derivative of the first derivative. So we have minus i times minus i is i squared. k times k is k squared. Our b continues, and we have e to the minus i kx. So this is the second derivative portion of the Hamiltonian. If we have a trial wave function, psi equals b times e to the minus i kx. If now we substitute that result into the Hamiltonian, we have that minus h bar squared over 2m times our second derivative result, which was i squared times k squared times b e to the minus i k x. We recall that i squared is equal to minus 1. So minus 1 times the minus in front here makes that a positive number. And we have the result that this is equal to h bar squared times k squared over 2m times b e to the minus i k x. And we recognize that the expression we have in orange here is simply our wave function back. So that tells us that the coefficient in front here, h bar squared k squared over 2m, is our observable e, the energy of the system. And we notice an interesting result, even with just the free particle, because we notice that whether we start with a wave function being a times e to the i kx, or psi being equal to b times e to the minus i kx. The energy is going to be exactly the same. So the energy in both of these cases is going to be h bar squared times k squared over 2m. And it gets exactly the same result because um, if we have k or minus k, once we square it, we are sure to get a positive value. So this tells us that so long as k is not equal to zero, we're going to get a positive value for the energy. So the energy is going to be non-negative, but it also tells us that we have two different wave functions, two different states of the system that give us exactly the same energy. And when we have that particular situation, we have a phenomenon called degeneracy.
Typically, we use a word like degenerate and degeneracy to mean something completely different, but in science, uh, particularly in physics, degeneracy means that we have two different states that have exactly the same energy. So we see that these two particular wave functions are degenerate for the free particle. 